Welcome to the Black Sparrow Media Internet Broadcast Network. Listening to Linux in the Hamshack. LHS is a podcast about Linux, open source, and amateur radio for everyone. Now, here are your hosts Russ, K5GUX, Cheryl, W5MOO, and Bill, NE4RD. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome. You have tuned in to episode number 525 of the most terrific amateur radio podcast on the internet. And this is Linux in the Ham Shack, and we are going to be doing our deep dive episode tonight. So thanks for being here. We appreciate you all, and we hope you enjoy the topic for tonight. But before we get into it, we're going to go ahead and introduce ourselves. I'm Russ, K5TUX. I'm back. I'm Cheryl, W5MOO. And I'm Bill, NE4RD. Uh, hoo hoo! <laughs> so, yes, finally back. The house is almost back together. Uh, Cheryl's office is put back together enough that it, at least her uh, her studio is set up. So, and before too long, probably I, I figure by uh, 2024, she'll probably be back in here recording with me. But in the meantime, at least we can have her back on the show. Uh, uh, sort of unfortunately, we've had a deep dive episode, so. <laughs> She'll probably spend <laughs> most of her time uh, just cleaning her office or something. But um, yeah, I, I still have stuff to do in my office, so I'll be here, but I won't be here. So <laughs> you'll be there with headphones on, but uh, yeah, exactly. All right. Well, very good. We're all back together again for episode number five twenty-five. So as I said, thanks for being here. But this is a topic that was uh, brought up um, because Bill posted a picture of his theater setup um, a week or so back, maybe a little bit longer, and people noticed he was using an app called Linux Show Player, which is something they use there at the theater for doing some sound production. So Bill is going to do a deep dive and tell us all about Linux Sound Player. <laughs> yeah. yeah did i say it wrong both times you said linux show player yeah but the, the second time i said sound so oh i'm correcting myself it's linux show player <laughs> yeah. or lisp or short which i'm gonna steal your thunder so <laughs> yeah the, well, lisp. there we go so we got uh thunder taken from me anyway yeah this is the, oh, the worst thunder sound effect oh, i've ever heard i know we have like a little a little rumble or something like that yeah okay that's better that's better <clears throat> Yeah, so we had like uh, some like immediate flashes of lightning that needed to happen and stuff. So yeah, they're quite tight. Anyway, yeah, this is a Linux show player, and uh, as as Russ said, it's Lisp for short. It's a uh, it's a free cue player, uh, primarily intended for sound playback during stage productions. Hey, that's exactly what we used it for. Uh, the ultimate goal is to provide a complete playback software for musical plays, theater shows, and similar. And I can attest from use that, uh, you know, minimally it uh, it checks all the boxes uh for for what we needed to do i think uh there might have been a couple of things extra I would have liked, but uh, uh, we'll probably get into that uh, when, when we move forward here. But uh, let's talk about a little bit about the features of this application. Um, for one thing, it is open source, which is great. It's built on Python, GStreamer, and Qt5. For those of you wondering what the technology is. Uh, it has uh, many, many, many features, and uh, you can install it via Flatpak. And uh, they're, they're in some of the repos. I believe uh, Debian has it, and the AUR has a package for it. But uh, I've installed it via Flatpak because I was running it on top of the Budgie Onyx build from Fedora 39. So I was like, well... Flat pack it is. <laughs> so, yeah, this uh, this is a pretty cool little application. It has a, a couple of different layouts that you can do uh, when you install it and you want to start setting up your sounds to start adding to the system. It has what's called a list layout or a cart layout. So the list layout is, as you would assume, a list of individual play objects, whether that be 
audio cues or action cues, which we'll get into that, uh, where you can sequence them in an order. So they're in order maybe by when they're going to be played. And it gives you a play button and a stop button, a fade out, fade in button, and a bunch of other buttons. If you check on the website, you can actually see that screen. Um, if you saw the pictures I posted in the the Discord channel, then you saw what was known as a cart layout, which has basically a bunch of little squares, much like you would see in an action pad or something like that, because I was using a touch screen, uh, like I was saying, and it makes it a lot easier for you to touch a big square rather than uh, touching a, uh, <laughs> a single line and hitting play or, or actually uh, setting it up to trigger an action. But uh, this thing can do lots of stuff, and that's that's kind of what I was looking at when I uh, started digging into it. Um, when you add, you when you go in and you want to add something to it, so when you first launch it, it's going to ask you whether you want to have that layout, that list layout or cart layout. Um, so we'll just we'll just say you selected cart layout. Uh, the cues get added. You can just right click and add a cue. And I got to get an empty page. Hold on. <laughs> so your options for adding cues are you have four different options. You have a media queue, which is what I was using for basically launching audio files. And this could be used also in amateur radio, I guess, for like a voice keyer. Should you have your, your computer hooked up that way and not using any other special software? Uh, another cue that you can add is a MIDI cue or an OSC cue. And these are actually special cues for sending uh, information across those two different protocols. And I did put in the definitions of these here because not everybody is familiar with uh, even MIDI, which is actually quite yeah, well known. <laughs> I would think by probably a certain age of people, uh, MIDI probably hasn't. I, don't, I mean, I used to remember playing playing MIDI files uh, when I was a little bit younger. But the, yeah, OSC is a is an open sound control. And uh, this is one that I technically have not heard of before. It's a protocol for networking sound for synthesizers, computers, and other multimedia services for purposes such as musical performance or show control. Uh, this is going to be a common theme. OSC's advantage include interoperability, accuracy, flexibility, and enhanced organization and documentation. Its disadvantages include inefficient coding of information, increased load on embedded processors, and lack of standard messaging uh, messages. Uh, the first specification was released in 2002, and that definition, of course, is from Wikipedia. And, of course, MIDI is the Musical Instrument Digital Interface. It's a technical standard that describes communication protocol, digital interface, and electric electrical connectors that connect a wide variety of electronic music equipments, computers, uh, and related audio devices. As well, uh, our, uh, our light board actually has MIDI interfaces on it, and it's probably pretty common for them to have that. So you can actually trigger off uh, commands that uh, fire off from those. And let's see, what else do you have? Let's see. Oh, cancel. Sorry. <laughs> uh, you have miscellaneous cues, which are command cues, where you can actually have it fire off an individual command, uh, as well as you have action cues that you can add. And uh, action cues can be a collection of cues, uh, an index action, a seek cue, a stop all cue, or a master volume control. Um, so in mine, which I don't think I ever had the, the stop all button on there, I added it after one of the shows just because if you have a bunch of sounds playing or you like touch something you shouldn't have touched and it doesn't turn off immediately because you have a fade... <laughs> A fade set up in it. The stop all button is like the save save your bacon button because it does exactly what it says. It stops everything from playing, uh, which is quite important in the middle of a show, and you screwed up. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, so I'm going to just talk a little bit about the audio cues because that's that's what I have the most familiarity with. Um, it's really kind of a cool and detailed app. They've gone into a lot of a lot of good uses inside of each of these audio files. So not only do you just add the audio file, when you go in and you actually look at the properties of the audio file, you you get a you get options of how you want the cue to actually work. And 
and well, and the button, of course. But the queue, uh, it has behavior. So it has like where you want it to, what you want it to do when it starts. Um, some would be you could fade in a sound, you could have it start immediately, or you could have, I guess, a do nothing action, which I'm not sure what that would be used for, <laughs> for a sound. Uh, but uh, you might have it where you, you don't do that. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Sorry about that. <laughs> the stop action would uh, give you an option to either uh, fade and pause, uh, stop, fade and stop, pause, release from loops. Should it be a looped uh, sound or do nothing? Uh, you have a post and pre-wait. So this is a the time you want it to go wait before the queue is executed or the time you want it to wait after the queue, queue is executed. Now, I never used any of those delayed queues because generally I was reading the script and following right along. So I didn't see the actual need to use that, but I can see in some cases if you have other actions chained in and this should come in like so many seconds after it's triggered, that would be probably pretty useful. And it has a fade out option for the queue as well uh, and how you want it to fade in, like the how long you want it to fade out. And it has three, four, three different curves here on mine. It has a linear curve, a quadratic curve, and a quadratic two curve. So I just use linear curves because I, I have, I do simple maths. I don't have to do that. So that's just in the queue itself. Now inside of the queue control, this is where you can actually apply additional items to it. So I said that you could touch or you can, you know, click the square uh, in the cart. But you can actually also set up keyboard shortcuts that you can program into this thing. So should you say, you know, for a laugh, you want to just touch the L button on your keyboard while you have this screen up, you could actually map that to do that. And this is also where inside the Q controls where you would actually add those custom MIDI controls and OSC controls if you wanted to have other actions firing off while the sound was playing. And yeah thinking about that, hey, when I click the lightning button or the thunder button, I would like all the lights to flash on the board on a certain uh, sub, uh, sub uh, item, sub channel. And you could do that with this. We didn't do that because we actually had a guy running lights. So we were totally, uh, totally separate. Uh, same thing with your OSC controls. You can send out special controls, command controls through that queue control. Um, the media queue, has a media queue option here where you can actually change the start position and stop position of the media should you want it to only like start five seconds in and trim it down. So in case you didn't edit any of your files, let's say somebody gave you a, a whole song and you only wanted to play, you know, the one minute in between the five minute song, you can actually set that up inside of here and not actually edit the file at all, which is kind of convenient, especially if you have like a queue that, you know, you don't really want to edit, but you know, like, oh yeah, I got to get rid of that uh, beginning silence or the beginning silence. So a lot of the audio files have like, you know, leading and trailing silence. You can go and trim it up inside of this editor itself. And this is also where you would set up if you wanted it to loop. You can set it up to loop a number of times or an infinite loop. Inside of the media settings tab, I mean, this thing is really detailed for one single audio thing. <laughs> they have a, uh, let's see here. Um, I'm trying to even see the, <laughs> that thing. Oh, the, the information where the file actually is located on your system, whether or not you want to use buffering. It has a volume control, so you can actually customize the volume of this particular track, uh, whether whether you want it normalized or set volume, you can apply an equalizer to a single item as well. And you can also look at the, uh, you can set the parameters for the DB meter when you're looking at it. So lots and lots and lots of settings. Uh, there is a time code tab as well, and I am not too familiar with that, so I didn't use it. Um, and there's also additional triggers. So you can actually have this queue trigger another queue. <laughs> so if you had to chain a bunch of stuff to happen at once, you could go ahead and do it within the context of a single queue or media queue in my case. And again, I didn't, I didn't go into using that kind of detailed stuff, but I thought it was just it was so powerful <laughs> to, to look at it. And, uh, you know, I kind of started figuring this application out as I was using it. And I realized that uh, you could also uh, change your, your layout a little bit. They have a drop down for layout. 
and you can add all kinds of extra goodies to your display screen. So you can see your actual, you know, view meters for each soundtrack or each cue on there. So you can see like the volume meters as it's playing, which is kind of a useful cue. Should you have hit the wrong button, obviously you'd hear it anyway, but maybe you wouldn't. But you would see which ones are actually playing or which ones are triggered. Um, you can actually have a volume slider right on the the item. I use this a couple of times because uh, we have uh, one piece of music that I was using in multiple places and it needed to be louder in one place and then it needed to be brought down for a little bit while they were talking and then brought back up again. Um, and I couldn't figure out how to how to do that in the uh, fade because I only wanted it to fade like a little bit and then I realized you can actually chain a volume control to it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't figure that out until later. Um, but uh, yeah, so you can actually uh, put a volume control right on each of your items. Uh, you can chain volume information inside of each of your items. So you can do exactly what I thought it didn't do. And uh, you also can have a slider for the actual media control. So you can change to where you are inside of a, a particular play. So like, I'll just start playing something here. And this is... And I'll just fast forward it. So now we're two minutes into the song. And now we're in the last minute of the song. And then I press it again to uh, fade out. So, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just, you know, I don't know. I, the last audio cue thing I used was on the cell phone because we only had like five cues to do. And it was just as easy to have a little simple player on a phone. That way, nobody had to have any special software installed and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, when I when I found this, I was I was yeah intrigued and I loved it because on one page I had all of my cues that I could possibly ever want <laughs> for the show, and I think I had a few extra spares in case they decided to add a few at the end, which they did. So I ended up having every button full, and I think I only didn't use one one particular cue on the system. But it, it's it's really nice. It doesn't uh, it doesn't seem to lag at all. I mean, you can trigger a lot of stuff to go off at once. And I'm just going to press a bunch of buttons. It's going to get noisy for a second. I'm just like kind of going around, just pressing everything. And then I hit the stop all button right after that. Uh, so I had like ten objects playing at one time, and it didn't it doesn't delay at all in, in firing stuff together. So it's it's very responsive. It's very uh yeah, it's very functional. I I I I really I really like this and I I hope to continue to uh show other people this at at our particular theater uh for when they want to do sound cues and stuff like that and possibly get some permanent computers up there so that uh maybe it entices them to actually uh, do this. Uh the software should technically work in other uh, environments cuz it is based on, you know, Python G Streamer. Was well, G Streamer in Windows or Mac? Russ, do you know? Don't recall if G Streamer is on those other platforms. Sounds like something that could be cross platform though. Yeah, that would be the only thing I would think would be the probably the hold up, but it probably does have at least a Windows. Yeah, G Streamer is on Windows. It's also on a, Yeah, it's that's a free desktop thing, so. So I bet you this probably would just work. Uh I, I'll probably have to download <laughs> download the source <laughs> and uh run it on the other systems and see. They only provide support and downloads for for Linux. Uh, obviously with its name, but they do say on their website that, uh, uh, yeah, it, it is, uh, it can be cross platform. Yeah. The core components, it's multi platform. Thus, in the future, despite its name, Lisp might get ported to other platforms. So I, I would assume you could probably, uh, probably try a stab at this if you're not running, uh, Linux, you know, perhaps you're running FreeBSD or something like that. Uh, you could probably do it. And, yeah, let's see some of the other things I didn't mention here. Uh, yeah, real time, uh, peak and replay gain normalization. So yeah, yeah, they have, you can actually take all your cues and then synchronize them and re, uh, not synchronize, synchronizing would be between players. So you can actually have two players connected together 
which is kind of cool. And you can also calculate out what kind of gain, I guess, if you're trying to normalize all your tracks together. Uh, you can uh, level them all out so at least they start all at the same um, peak volumes. And that's probably very useful, too, when you're setting them up. We kind of just went through each one and set the volume for the theater <laughs> for when it was being used because they didn't want some stuff being too loud and then the other stuff, you know, whatever. Because <laughs> a lot of it, we had dialogue that had to kind of happen at the same time. So a lot of the stuff, we'd start like a song and we'd do like a little radio static and then we'd start the, a nice little sound song. It's a little loud, but we click it and have a nice slow fade out, and then then the then it kind of just sets the scene, and then then the actors would start their uh, their dialogue, you know, it working into that that clear space, you know, and yeah, you don't need to have the music running the whole time while they're actually doing their their acting bits and stuff like that. It's more of a distraction. So, but you could uh, you you could do pretty much anything with this uh, software if you have a need for this kind of queuing obviously uh you know i guess you know people that do podcasting and stuff like that probably have soundboards i mean you have a soundboard right so i do have a soundboard so yeah so this is another tool in the chest so you can have uh you know yeah a nice cool linuxy soundboard i'm i'm uh looking at i just as you were describing the thing it occurred to me that my light controller has MIDI connectors and <laughs> I am seriously, I, I just put a uh, USB MIDI uh, cable into my Amazon cart. So I can, <laughs> I'm seriously considering using this for, uh, for doing light scenes. So oh, cool. Yeah. I mean, you could definitely, definitely trigger stuff to occur through MIDI. So uh, yeah, it's something I would like to look into as well. Kind of yeah, looking at all the software we have. Uh, our board is a ETC Express board for lights, and uh, yeah, it's old school, <laughs> but it works still. Yeah, I don't know what functionality you can actually do with the MIDI controller. I have long since forgotten where the instruction manual for my light controller is, but the fact that it has a MIDI interface uh, at least makes me think that I'll be able to do something with it. And of course, uh, in my, you know, what I do here sound wise, I generally don't need a soundboard, you know, for the live show type stuff, but it would probably work out well running on a Mac here. So I could do soundboard stuff outside of discord, which has a soundboard built in, but it's got limitations. So it might be nice to, to use Linux show player in place of that, in place of my uh, really, really ancient iPad that I used to use, um, <laughs> <laughs> which was connected to my old soundboard, which was done via USB inter or uh, Bluetooth interface, which I don't even have anymore. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it sounds really cool. I like I like it. And I like um, it has all the functionality that I'm familiar with, with, uh, you know, a cart style soundboard. Um, and I like the fact that it does like the auto leveling and stuff like that too. It's really cool. Yeah. I think it, it has a, you know, the right set of features and, you know, I don't know how long this project's been around, but you know, I, I've been looking for it for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> now you found it. Oh, do you have like a, do you have like a hallelujah sound or a, <laughs> no, no, we don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like a six years or no, nine years. When was the initial commit was nine years ago. Oh, my gosh. I, I am starting to put stuff in, though. Speaking of soundboards, things like this. Bring more vodka. <laughs> Bring more vodka. <laughs> um, do you remember all the old Richardisms and stuff like that? Oh, yeah. We used to end the, used to end the shows with them. All right. More fun shooting gun than house. Yep. <laughs> That's a little echoey, actually. That's kind of It sounds echoey? That's interesting. Yeah, it's maybe a loop through two places. <laughs> oh, let's try, try this. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can have all kinds of fun with this. So it's, uh, you know, it's, uh... Merry Christmas! <laughs> I guess you know what, what your uh, play was all about. <laughs> well, you know, it was a, uh, it was a uh, farce. <laughs> <laughs> 
The game's afoot. Ken Ludwig's The Game's Afoot. It's a uh, story about uh, a guy, William Gillette, who played uh, who played Sherlock, but he thought he was Sherlock in the play, at least. It was a farce. It was funny. It was, it was pretty funny, but it was sort of like a Holmes for the holidays kind of thing. They were uh, all having uh, dinner at uh, at the, his mansion in Connecticut on Christmas Eve. So it really wasn't a Christmas story, but... Uh, yeah, we needed that sound effect for uh, right at the beginning of the show where they're doing the play within the play. So they're just getting done with their run on, you know, on their show in New York or whatever. And they're, you know, the, he's like, Merry Christmas, everyone. And so the, the audience has to respond. And of course, you know, audiences sometimes don't respond naturally. <laughs> So, so we had everything, including you know, had to laugh at his jokes and stuff like that. And um, but that was the only you know, everybody else clapped at the end of the show, so I didn't have to like you know, seed the uh, the actual end, <laughs> <laughs> the curtain call. <laughs> that would be pretty bad, right? It's like okay, it's time to end the show, people. Come on. Uh, but you said uh, when your live performance has a laugh track, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, let me tell you, it's like, uh, this is a funny part, people. You're supposed to laugh. <laughs> Be afraid. So, like, so it's, we have, uh, we have, um, uh, high schoolers come in and watch a program like twice a year. So we'll bring them in like, you know, Monday morning for the Monday morning show. And sometimes like they, they just don't, they don't laugh and like, they don't think they should laugh or something, or I don't know, just, just maybe it's, it feels awkward laughing. <laughs> So we have to always tell them at the beginning, the show is funny. <laughs> Please laugh. Otherwise, you're going to scare the actors. Because <laughs> we like, oh, uh, yeah, it's always fun the first time uh, they do a run through in a play with um, in a comedy play with uh, with an actual audience because they haven't practiced stopping for people laughing and uh, they just kind of railroad right over top of the laugh. And it's like, yeah, we didn't hear your follow up line. So. But anyway, nothing to do with Linux Show Player. But anyway, I, I check it out. I think uh, I think it's a pretty cool piece of software. It has a lot of capabilities and 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 uses uh, for people using things like Stream Decks and stuff like that. I mean, this thing would obviously handle doing a lot of that stuff as well because it does do action items. And you know, considering you can actually just you know chain in commands. I can see all kinds of stuff you could possibly do with it, including, you know, uh, flipping your, uh, your OBS, uh, your OBS, uh, you know, whichever scene you're on in OBS while you're, you know, clicking a button or whatever. So you could almost do uh, you know, full, full streamer, uh, streamer thing with a, a touch, touch based laptop. Oh, that sounds interesting. I do have a touch based laptop. Hmm. <laughs> 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 it's you know, funny things. You know how, like, in some movies or TV shows where there's a bit where it, it, in, in a show that would have, like, a lot of slapstick, slapstick type stuff? Yeah. There'll be a scene where somebody will go into another room and then you'll hear a lot of weird things like, you know, glass crashing and things falling down and, you know, stuff like that. And you're supposed yeah. to, yeah. You know. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing coming from Cheryl's office right now. <laughs> 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 it's like if from across the hall, I could hear like things rattling and banging and stuff shuffling around. And so, so I'm just wondering if a Wolverine got in or something, or I don't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and my door is shut. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I do hear a lot of clattering and banging. <laughs> Well, it's almost time for you to come back in anyway, so because um, we're we're actually getting down towards the end of the show. Unless uh, anyone has any questions or anything about Linux Show Player, and uh, I I don't have anything. Although I really want to investigate this more because I think it can do some cool things that I might be interested in. But um, you did. We can always jump back if anyone has any questions. Uh, links to information about Linux Show Player and where you can get it and all that stuff is going to be in the show notes. But you said you have a follow-up to our topic, our last deep dive on Fedora 39. So do you want to hit that while we wait and see if there's any uh, additional feedback? Yeah, sure. I you know I was my quick update on the Shack Pewter series, which is uh, my my switching my uh, my ham radio Shack computer to Fedora 39. So I mentioned that the videos were going, <laughs> but I've kind of gotten to the point in my uh, Fedora-ness that I, I'm getting a little bit of buyer's remorse. <laughs> so, so 
I'm not sure I want to continue down the path. I'm uh, I'm currently experimenting with uh, with others. I'm not. To, it's not to say that that running Fedora 39 for your Linux uh, ham radio shack isn't uh, isn't a great thing. It's just I've I've run into some of the quirkiness that is not just ham radio specific. It's it has a little to do with. Well, it has a little to do with the system that it's on being a little quirky anyway, and a little bit to do with a Fedora not including certain things. Like I had some really bad issues with video playback while I was trying to edit the videos <laughs> for the uh, series. Like I would click the video to play and it would take about 15 seconds for it to actually start playing. And these weren't huge files or anything like that. And I went round and round, round and round, and I put in that comment in the, the I think it was the tech channel about uh, fixing <laughs> fixing it with erasing uh, some of the some of the plugins and making sure you had it coming from RPM Fusion. So uh, so I think that was that was strike one, and uh, I ran into some issues. Yeah. I, I'm just getting some weird application timeout issues that I'm not used to seeing inside of uh, Garuda when I was running it. So, so I, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely having some. Uh, I'm losing my faith a little bit here, and that this is a good decision <laughs> for at least my purposes. But yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, let's see. Steve's saying Fedora definitely doesn't have the same love as Debian, Ubuntu, Arch, World for Ham Radio. That that's true. That's true. It was it is quite peppy though. I'm I'm quite happy with the the performance of it. So yeah, hmm. I'm 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 considering other alternatives at this point, but I do want to wrap up that that series and and finish editing the videos so I can get all that crap off the hard drive. <laughs> put it somewhere else <laughs> and i really want to get my uh my pass through capture card actually plugged in to do it cuz i was looking at some of the videos i was doing of um uh some of the uh like i was i videoed going through the minecraft server and stuff like that and the the codecs and stuff like that that i was using on obs to record directly from the computer although it was functional it was just a little bit uh, polluted with artifacts so i either don't have the really right settings for that to all to work right or it's easier to do it the way i'm thinking of doing which is just basically you know sucking in the uh, HDMI signal and just lifting it off of there from the other computer. Uh, that way, it's all pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, I've never seen a <laughs> camera get glitchy like that, so uh, I feel more confident doing that as well. So yeah, that's kind of the update, that it's sort of it's in limbo right now of me actually finishing what I actually started. I might just do a different video for that. <laughs> Since since I, I got to the buyer's remorse part of it, and that wouldn't be a very exciting conclusion to uh, to the series. So uh, so yeah, uh, to be determined uh, whether uh, whether that will actually uh, come to fruition or not. Okay, fair enough. Honestly, since we did the show, I haven't really played with Fedora. It's it's still on one of my VMs, and I could certainly you know use it again if I wanted to, but. I don't know, kind of set in my ways. I'm still trying to figure out what to do about this old iMac. The screen has actually got like video ripples in it, <clears throat> mm -hmm. where I think the uh, uh, the LCD screen is sort of like detaching from whatever it's connected to. So <laughs> I think it's uh, getting close to time to to ditch the thing in favor of something else. But I guess it won't be for door 39. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no way. <laughs> <laughs> and Steve yeah. also said to jump back to the original thing, uh, it's pretty cool to see open source used in community theater. And I agree. It's cool to see open source used everywhere. Yes, yes, for sure. All right. Well, that's pretty much it. I don't have anything else to add. And uh, we do have one bit of feedback, and it came from uh, one of our new listeners, VU2TUM. I think, I'm sure you remember the... Uh, <laughs> oh yes <laughs> yeah and uh he says uh thanks for not butchering my name in the end you guys got it right and if anybody remembers this from i think uh two episodes ago yes it was two two episodes ago it was uh puniet from india who's a new listener and thanks for listening and i'm glad we 
got your name at least close to right. So <laughs> <laughs> we tried. Yeah, we we do our best. We really do. Except for Cheryl. She just she doesn't care. She just <laughs> <laughs> plows through those names. <laughs> Speaking of which <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Try to try to perk her ears up so she'll be back here because she's the one I'm here. Going. All right. <laughs> So the new subscribers, supporters, and live participants are actually down to that. And you haven't read these for a real, real long time. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna jump you back into it right now. Yeah. Well, I just found my calendar, my daily calendar for my desk. The last day that was ripped off was April fourteenth. Yeah, that sounds about right. So it's it's been a while. So <laughs> yep. yep. So so this time for our new subscribers and patrons, we have Joel Brower. For Facebook, we have Scott Peterman, Richard Borsella, Chris Manis, Michael Kantz, and 14 others. Regretfully, on Facebook, they scroll off to where we can't see them if we have more than maybe one person a day. So that that's always an issue. But if you've joined us on Facebook, thank you. Uh, on Twitter, we had Tithet253857. On YouTube, we had Massimilano Lab and Tom NB2A. On Discord, we had Naf Leg C and Jarrah Clark 25. And on Instagram, we had T Sales. Um, let's see here. On uh, Mastodon, we had Abraxas 3D. There were no merchandise sales. There was no mailing list. And in the live chat, we have Allie Kitten, Joel Brar. Steve, KJ5T, Darren, VK6EK, Tony, K4XSS, Ted, WA0EIR, and Steve, KA7HVT. All right. Very good. Well, it's good to have you back on the show. And uh, next time you'll actually get to participate. <laughs> we'll have you reading articles and hopefully you won't be uh, pilfering through uh, storage totes <laughs> at the same time by then. Yeah, well, whatever. So... And with that, I guess we have come. <laughs> Ted says what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that's in uh, reference to, but okay. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that brings us down to the end of the show. We hope you enjoyed it, and we uh, hope you uh, have a good week coming up, and we'll be back with our short topics episode after that. So thanks, everybody, for downloading the show or being here with us live and to chat up while we discuss Linux show player and other things. We really appreciate that. We hope you have a great week. Uh, we hope you have a great rest of your day after listening to the show. And we'll catch up with you all very, very soon. But for now, this has been episode number 525 of Linux in the Ham Shack. And we'll see you later. I'm Russ, K5TUX. I'm Cheryl, W5MOO. And I'm Bill, NE4RD73. Thank you for listening to this episode of Linux in the Hamshack. LHS is a community-sponsored podcast. Our website is located at lhspodcast.info. You can support the podcast by visiting the LHS Patreon page at patreon.com stroke lhspodcast or by using the contribute list on the homepage. We have a presence on Discord, Facebook, IRC, Twitter, and YouTube. You can also drop us an email at info at lhspodcast.info or leave us a voicemail at 1-909-NHS-SHOW. That's 1-909-547-7469. Visit the online LHS merchandise store at shop.lhspodcast.info for fun and fashionable show themed merchandise. Until next time, remember to always heed your hedonism. Mm-hmm.